Today's episode has been brought to you by Schedulicity. Well, hello and welcome, Connected Yoga Teachers. If you are listening in real time, we have made it to February. I am so glad that you're here today listening to the Connected Yoga Teacher Podcast. In case we haven't met before, I'm Shannon Crow, a mom of three, a yoga teacher, and a trainer and consultant who works for yoga teachers. And this podcast was created for you so that you can connect to the information and inspiration each and every week and feel supported as you navigate being a yoga teacher and also an entrepreneur. So since the pandemic hit, all of us have had to adapt and change how we share yoga with our students. With many countries around the world going into lockdown and then out of lockdown and back into lockdown for some of us, we've had to shift to teaching yoga online and for many of us, this has been a steep learning curve. And I just want to highlight, I'm pretty sure that none of us, except for yoga teachers this year, learned this much tech in their yoga teacher training. I even remember back on the podcast where teaching online was this really unique new thing that I wanted to share more and more with yoga teachers because it kind of opened the world up to different yoga students. And especially if you've chosen a niche, it really helped you to stand out that you could work with people from around the globe. And so we've had guests like Nikki Knob Levy in episode 181 about how to grow an online yoga business and Jenny McGoy in episode 161 on how to get your yoga online in 48 hours. Amanda McKinney and I jumped online and did a full masterclass all on teaching online. And we talked about that in episode 165 if you want to catch the highlights. However, one of the things I often get questions about that we haven't covered right now is all about the tech of teaching online. Now we have two resources for you today. Today's episode with Dominique and also an article that Crunch wrote that is amazing. I will make sure that it's linked in the show notes. Go and check it out because so many of our connected yoga teachers have told us the tech that they love and Crunch has compiled that all for you. The article that Crunch has created splits this up into audio, video, and lighting suggestions as well as bonus tips and even a couple of really great photos showing a yoga teacher at home setup. It's an amazing article. Huge shout out of thanks to Crunch for creating this and all of the yoga teachers who contributed and told us what tech they're using while they teach their online yoga classes. If you want to check out those threads or you want to ask yoga teachers questions, come on over to our Facebook group. If you go to the connectedyogateacher.com, there's a join button right there on our homepage. So in addition to that really amazing article, today's podcast episode, Dominique Gautier has some amazing tips and tricks for sharing yoga online. She has really dug in and figured out the tech and equipment, and you'll hear how she started to add one more thing each and every time, and also you'll get to hear how this wasn't easy for her. She doesn't consider herself a tech person, but she had some very detailed notes for us and shared as much as possible about how she's managing to do this. So Dominique shares the challenges for her, for some of her students, for what it was like to go into lockdown, come back to hybrid classes, and As I'm recording this right now, Dominique is back to all 100% online classes, but when the restrictions lift, she'll be ready to bounce back to hybrid classes. And she basically can do any variation of this now for her students. And if you're looking for other podcasts, other resources, the article, and all of the show notes, make sure you head on over to the connectedyogateacher.com slash 205. There, you can also leave us a review. We love to hear from you. We love to hear what episodes really resonate with you. We love to hear how the podcast is supporting you. And we especially love to hear if you have an idea of how we can improve things. So you can do all of that over where you leave a review. In our show notes, you'll see the button there. 
Another way that you can share your feedback with us, Connected Yoga Teachers, is to leave us a voicemail. There's a button on our homepage over on the right-hand side that says leave a voicemail, and it allows you 90 seconds. If you feel like you have more to say, you can just click the button again and leave another voicemail. I want to give such a heartfelt hug and thanks to Laura, a fellow Canadian who definitely has figured out our voice message button. And I also want to say like, this is one of my favorite ways to hear from you. Any connected yoga teachers, Laura, thank you so much for doing this because it's so often a one-way conversation as a podcaster and to hear your response about an episode really just warms my heart. So let's hear what Laura has to say about episode 200. Hi, Shannon. It's Laura Fowler Massey here, and I'm sending you this voice message. I just listened to the podcast with uh, Judith Hansen Lasseter and Lizzie Lasseter, and um, I was driving uh, because I needed to, you know, go somewhere because, you know, we can't go anywhere. So I was feeling a need to go somewhere. So I took a drive and listened to the podcast. And uh, I have to agree with you, I kind of welled up there at the end as well, because I could just relate to so much of what they said. It was so fantastic. And um, as somebody who has been practicing yoga for decades now and teaching for a really long time, I agree. The the notion that you find your own words um, and you teach something through your experience. Um, I felt like that's what they were trying to share with us partially and and that we're never going to get it perfect and perfect doesn't matter. It's sincerity that matters. And, you know, holding that in our heart and sharing that out in the best way that we know how at the time that we're sharing it. Anyway, it was really great. Loved the interview. Thanks so much, Shannon. Take care. Bye. Another thank you before we dive into the episode is a shout out of gratitude and thank you to our sponsor, Schedulicity, for making this episode possible, for bringing this episode to you, for really also serving our yoga teacher community. I know that Dominique uses and loves Schedulicity, and this is a company that really helps to organize your payments, your bookings, and they do it with amazing customer service. Let's hear our hot tip of the week from the team over at Schedulicity. Hey, Connected Yoga Teachers, this is Shayna with the Schedulicity Hot Tip of the Week. Schedulicity lets you easily visualize your plans and make changes that you don't have to write down or try to remember. Your students can always check your available classes anytime and stay up to date with changes you make. If you change a class that students have already enrolled in, Schedulicity will automatically offer to send them an alert. If you're experimenting with finding the most popular attendance times in your area, it's easy to look back and examine the success of your past classes. When your students realize they can trust you to keep them connected online in this way, they'll never be shocked if your ideal schedule happens to change. After all, flexibility is key. Alrighty, connected yoga teachers, let's dive in. Dominique Gautier is a personal trainer and yoga teacher, as well as the founder of Body Mind Fitness. She's a core and pelvic floor specialist who offers corporate wellness programs, personal training, private yoga, and personalized small group yoga classes online and in person at her studio in London, Ontario. Dominique works with clients to provide specialized training to manage and prevent symptoms of pelvic floor dysfunction improve their overall pelvic health, and allow them to lead an active lifestyle. Her passion is helping women build and reclaim their strength and confidence from the inside out with movement, education, and a body-positive, sustainable approach. Let's meet Dominique and find out more about how we can streamline the tech and teach yoga online. Hey, Connected Yoga Teachers, welcome to our live show today with Dominique. Dominique, welcome. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm so excited to be here. I am really excited that you're going to get to walk us through, talk us through how you figured out the tech of 
teaching online because a lot of our teachers are in that right there with you. Connected Yoga Teachers, Dominique is actually a member of Pelvic Health Professionals, so I asked her to share what her experience inside of the membership is like. Oh, and also before we dive in, I want to let you know that the doors to Pelvic Health Professionals are now open, and if you're listening in real time, the price is going up in March, so if you are considering this at all, I would go on over and check it out before March. Well, first of all, the reason I'm in pelvic health is because of you. (laughs) Um, I don't know if you remember this, but I reached out to you when I was very pregnant to join the Mama Nurture prenatal training. And (laughs) I think the email went something like, so I'm due the day of the last day of training. Do you think that's like too late for me? to? (laughs) Do you think that's okay if I'm due on the Sunday that we're having the training? Is that okay? Um, And you're like, I think we should probably put that off. I was like, okay. <laughs> right. But um, through there, I, I specialized in pre and postnatal. And then I went on to um, specialize in pelvic health because I peed my pants at eight months postpartum doing nothing but cooking in the kitchen. I wasn't jumping, laughing, sneezing, nothing. I just stood there and peed. And I thought it was, that's it. I'm going to be in Depends forever. That was my thought at the time. I'm 31 and I'm stuck in Depends now forever. And it was through some of the knowledge you had, as well as finding out about pelvic floor physiotherapy, that not only did I realize that my pelvic floor physiotherapist said my pelvic floor is boring, and within two sessions, we fixed it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And I never peed again. Well, not never, but um, not just cooking in the kitchen. And from there, she told me that the key to keeping your pelvic floor healthy for life is adding the pelvic floor into regular exercise. So that's where I started my specialty. And the thing I love about the pelvic health professionals um, group, program, uh, membership, membership, is um, that it allows us the opportunity to kind of be keeping up with things that are coming out as they come. Because even just in the three, four years I've been specializing in pelvic health, so much has changed. And having the opportunity to talk to people from all walks of life and all different ways that people are supporting women's pelvic health has been a real game changer. And uh, being able to ask questions in the group and find out insights from other people that might have dealt with certain things that you haven't yet had an opportunity to deal with or you're just entering that with a client has been so, so beneficial. And I've had so many successes with clients just from asking questions and being part of the group. It's been really, really exciting and fulfilling and just feeling like, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. (laughs) (laughs) You do. You're one of our public health experts out there. And I love that you're combining this with both yoga and your um, training, like your one-on-one training that you do with people as well. So yeah. if if yoga teachers are listening and wanting to join or PTs or doulas or midwives, whoever, if you're interested in pelvic health, that's how you can sign up. Thank you so much for that, Dominique. I'm yeah. glad that um, you landed on one of the episodes where we were talking about pelvic health professionals. I'm popping in here again, Connected to Yoga Teachers, because I wanted to let you know that Dominique and I recorded this live back at the end of 2020. So If you actually want to see the whole unedited video version of this, I'll link to it in the show notes. Also, Dominique is based in London, Ontario. And when we spoke, she was teaching both online and in person. But now that's all changed for her. Again, everything's back to online as I record this right at the end of January 2021. When Dominique was teaching in person and this hybrid of online in person, there were actually new restrictions that she was facing that required three meters of distance between mats and for yoga teachers to be wearing masks the whole class. And here's where Dominique shared how she felt really challenged with this because she was teaching both online and in person at the same time. The instructors have to start wearing masks now which makes me a little bit anxious because I do uh, show everyone everything because first of all, I'm providing a recording online. It goes into a member portal. uh, So I want to have that taken care of. And also I find a lot of my students are visual learners. So if I just sit there and look out at them and talk them through it, they're just going to sit there for a few minutes until they realize they're supposed to be doing something. So um, I really go through the entire class and I've already told them, I'm like, I might not be showing as much as I did before because 
uh, I have a very hard time breathing through the mask. I gladly do it. But even when I'm personal training and lifting, like, I don't think you can see them. They're over there. The barbells are upright. Yeah. And I'm lifting them out. I'm getting quite winded wearing my mask because I do wear a mask when I'm personal training. Also connected yoga teachers, we recently had an interview with Claire Kelly talking all about masks and yoga. I highly recommend checking that episode out. As I said, we're in this new phase of lockdown here in Ontario, Canada, so all yoga classes are now happening online. Another reminder just to check with your local health department or the people who make the rules in your area. Since Dominique and I talked, it's all changed again for her, as I said, and she's now teaching online. I had asked her to share what she's learned to make all of this tech easier. Starting from Zoom, here is what she does. Right now I have a setup involving a DSLR camera that was lent to me to see if this would actually work before I invested in one, um, where the DSLR gets sent straight to YouTube. So it's actually available as soon as the class is done within a couple of minutes. And the Zoom people watch through my phone currently right now, but I'm working on something else for that as well. And then I have a computer in front of me as well so I can see them. Okay. Because personalized attention has always been big for me. I came from a big box gym. Um, it's probably not hard to figure out which one in Canada. And <laughs> I didn't um, I didn't like that there was sometimes I felt like I was looking out and I could see somebody really struggling with something. And I'd make eye contact and I'd be like, okay, now, now step your foot here. And they'd just nod at me and go, <laughs> right. like they're doing it. Because, you know, some people have a little bit more of a struggle with body awareness. So I really... That was the basis of my studio to begin with, was offering personalized attention within a group setting. Um, so they are considered a premium class, so I do charge a little bit more than the average student. And that student goes through a whole waiver, the same one that I put my personal training students through, and they can choose what they want to answer or not. And I take that information and I plan the class around the individuals in the class because I do run sessions as well, so I know exactly who's going to be in the class. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. and so that's you take that intake information and plan it that way and you want to be able to see then. Yeah. And some of them don't share their video and that's okay. Um, and the ones that do, I actually realized when I was watching back a replay, I'm like, why am I looking down so much? And then I was like, oh, I'm checking in with the people. <laughs> but right. I'm really like, what am I doing? Why am I looking at the floor? Because you can't see the, <laughs> you can't see the computer in the shot, but I just kept looking down at the floor and that's because I'm checking in with the students that are that are there on the video. Okay. So how is it that you get it to go directly to YouTube? So there's a few things I made notes. So if I'm looking down today, it's because I'm looking at my notes. Um, yeah. So I want to start off by saying, and you said this a bunch, Amanda McKinney has said this a bunch, and I really tried to listen to this, this advice, is start with what you have. Right. And at the beginning, what I had was, my iPhone. So I was doing probably what many people are doing, and that is recording through the iPhone and then taking the recording from Zoom and putting it onto YouTube. And then that was working fine until um, my husband, he's my tech guy. All of my knowledge comes from him. I just want to say that right now. <laughs> he created a member portal for me because he's a web developer. So I don't have to go through Teachable or anything else. I have it directly on my website. It was designed the way I want it to be designed. And when we launched the member portal and I saw this Zoom recording, I was like, this looks so terrible. Because <laughs> the Zoom recordings, when you record from your phone, they go into their system. So the quality is much lower. If you're recording to your computer, you can get, I think, a 720p recording and it's much better. But if it's going into the the Zoom cloud or whatever they call it, um, it's not the greatest quality you've ever seen. So, and because I had this beautiful membership site, this YouTube video from Zoom is ugh. So we took one of my old iPhones and we started recording a separate video recording. So we recorded it at 1080p. Then I would take this video afterwards put it onto my computer and do some editing. So I have a disclaimer at the beginning of each of my videos. I put my logo up in the corner. And then at the end, I have a little contact card with my logo and my phone number and website on it, which probably doesn't need to be there because anybody seeing it is already part of the studio. <laughs> so 
they can compound me, no problem. But it's right. just nice. I like the way that it looks at the end. It kind of is a nice, just final, like, this is it, this is done. And if I ever used it for anything else, if I sent it out maybe as a freebie, it would be nice to have if someone isn't part of the classes. And this was very time consuming. So on Tuesdays, for instance, my work day starts at nine o'clock since this all started because my 10 minute setup turned into a half hour setup. And um, then I would go home. My last class finishes at 8.30 p.m. And I would go home and do another hour to an hour and a half of work. And that's not including the time it takes to upload the video to YouTube, which took two to five hours. Not that I have wow. to wow. But And I was getting, to be honest, I was getting really bitter about it. <laughs> Like, no kidding. Really That's a lot and, of time. Yeah. yeah. And at the time, so my morning class I could do at the studio kind of in between classes. So I have a morning classes. I have clients in the afternoon. So the uploading can happen while I'm doing my clients. And then in the evening, I have two back to back classes. So I had two classes to get up within 24 hours into the member portal. So yeah, I was getting really bitter. I was exhausted. I was burnt out. And there's this realization too that online isn't going anywhere. Right. I don't think ever. I think it's always going to be part of our offerings. There's always going to be a subset of people that prefer online because it's convenient. You can go to your basement or whatever and do your yoga class. I think it's always going to be here. And because we've had to rely on it for so long, people are just going to come to expect it. Right. Um, And the thought of this being forever is devastating me. (laughs) Right. It's just like, like, I just want to go back to where I taught in person and everyone was here. Yeah. I talk a lot about how I really miss the simplicity pre COVID. Like, I don't think I realized how simple it was to just do a class before COVID. Right. So that's what I started with. And I had a list of things that were my most important things. So, number one was sound quality. It really bugged me when I got into an online class and I was struggling to hear somebody. So the first thing I did was I bought the lapel mic. And I actually did this before COVID because I was recording some freebie videos and things like that. So I got the lapel mic back last October. And it was the one that you've recommended, the Pixel M7. Yes, Shelly Aaron told me Mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one I got. Um, Because I use it for like 12 hours a week, I think it's time to maybe replace it because I think it's a little tired. It's making some funny noises once in a while. But that was my number one priority. The second thing was making sure my students could see me easily. So when I was in here by myself, I actually put the camera on an angle to my mat and I had it kind of facing a little bit upward so I could get the camera really close without having to zoom in because as soon as you do the digital zoom in, it gets all grainy. And I had it actually set up right here and I had the camera on an angle and it really allowed me to get really close with the camera so people could see really easily. And I got a lot of comments that this was actually a really nice way to do it because sometimes there's a lot of floor space in front or there's a lot of bit, a lot of ceiling. And sometimes you'll lose my hand, but you don't really need to see my hand most of the time or if the hand's position's important, I'll show it and then I'll put it out of frame and that's fine. So those so were my two... To touch on the video, mm-hmm. some of our teachers have been asking, like, what level should the camera be at? Like, some people mm-hmm. have had it higher up or lower down. So you're mm-hmm. saying, like, where do you know, how, like, roughly how far? Well, when off I was the doing it, it that close and on the angle, it was probably about mid thigh level, mid thigh to hip level, and it would just be slightly tilted upwards. So you could still see, like, basically, it cut off at the corner of my mat and then showed right. everything upward, and that seemed to work really well. Um, Now that I have the camera set up, I keep it hip level, hip belly button level. And it's still tilted up a little bit, but not as drastically because it's not a flattering picture. Your hips look very big (laughs) and your head looks really small. Um, (laughs) But but what you need, though, is what your audience needs. isn't. It isn't. It is true. Um, But there is that little part of me that's like, this could be better. And this worked great when nobody was here in the studio. It was a great setup. And then we moved into phase three, which is where we could start bringing people back into classes classes in August, I believe, or at least that's when I started because I was like, I'm finishing off this session online and then I'm going to wrap my mind around bringing people back in because I knew there was going to be another learning curve of figuring out, okay, where do I place the camera? Where do I place the people? So I brought them in. People started coming back in person. I really limited it to like two spots the first session through and it was summertime, so that wasn't hard to do. And I made sure that the position was, the camera was positioned correctly. So I tried the angle thing at first, but then it felt like the people on Zoom were on the outside looking in and I didn't like that. So I put them in the center 
So they always feel like they're part of class because the last thing I wanted is for the Zoom people to feel like they weren't part of the group. Um, and then you can see like I have this big fluorescent light behind me. I have four of them on the ceiling. I couldn't use those anymore like I was when I was by myself. So I went without the lights and put up my little lamps that I have, my little Ikea lamps. And it was so dark on the recording, you couldn't see anything. I even tried in editing to like brighten it up. And I went home that night and I bawled my eyes out. I have cried so much <laughs> during these learning curves. Oh. Um, and I, I'm the kind of person that I need to have my pity party for the evening. And then I'm like, I go, I'm going to take my ball and I'm going to go home. And I, that's me saying I'm going to go to bed. And, right. uh, and as I'm having my pity party, my husband's like throwing out all these ideas. Oh, you know, there's these lights. They're great. They're going to work. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't know. It's not going to happen. It's going to be distracting. It's going to be this. And then the next day I have to kind of tuck my tail between my legs and be like, so what were those lights you were recommending? <laughs> because I know of the big box lights. But they take up right. a lot of space and they're right, right at eye level with people. So that's all that was in my head about that. So that was my next step is now, okay, getting lights. And I have these, they're actually sitting right here lighting me up because it's a cloudy day here in London, but they're LED lights and they're long and skinny. And oh. they, you can adjust the, the, how bright they are, how low they are. They go super bright. They go super low. And when you look at them from behind, you don't see any light. I'm lit up, but it's not like the, students have these bright LED lights in their eyes. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. One little note here, Connected Yoga Teachers. Dominique showed me these lights in the video that we did live, which again, I link to in the show notes. And I love them so much that I bought some for my office. And Sean teaches online twice a week and he's been using them and really likes them. I bought them so that I could do like Zoom and have some lighting in our sometimes dark days of winter here in Canada. I will make sure to link to all of the tech that Dominique is talking about, including those lights in the show notes. And they have <laughs> ones that have like warm lights and cool lights. We just went with the cool lights and just adjusted an eCam, which is what I use right now to upload my videos. So Right. So that was the next step. But here I am still spending hours and hours and hours editing videos. I have seven to eight classes a week. Wow. That's like eight to 12 hours of my time gone. Time that, yeah. you know, and I'm making less money now. So it feels like a burden. It really did. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. So then my husband again comes up with this idea of, okay, well, maybe it's time to invest in like an L DSLR camera and do this. And I was like, oh. Remember that part where I'm making less money? <laughs> <laughs> What's your husband's name, first of all, before we go any further? His name's Steve. Steve, that's yeah. right. Like, yeah. huge shout out to Steve for just, like, <laughs> continuing to cheer you on. You know, anywhere in there, he could have just been like, it's I'm done with then. you. I'm done. And you can do this on your own. <laughs> and oh, he's still it. at home right now figuring out, like, the next step that we have oh for, for stuff. Like he, like last night I got home from work and he's like, I've been spending an hour with this program and trying to figure this out. And I'm like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure it's really simple by the time you tell me what to do. <laughs> Another note here, connected yoga teachers, Dominique shared that she borrowed a friend's camera before investing in one. She really wanted to make sure that it would work first. And I think this is something to highlight Use what you have first. Try that as much as you possibly can before you go out and purchase something. I also wanted to say that as I'm listening to Dominique and so many of you out there who have been reaching out and telling me all of the tech things that you're doing, I think, wow, we did not learn any of this in yoga teacher training. Dominique is such an inspiration in how she just kept going and just kept adding one more piece to this. The other thing I want to highlight is what a great guy Steve is for continuing to cheer his wife, Dominique, on through all of this. The important thing about a camera um, is that it either has, and this is going to sound really technical, but you can find this in the specs of cameras, is a clean HDMI output. So it's got a little cord. It comes with the camera, and it has a USB um, 
connection at the end. And that's what plugs into another device like a laptop. Or it needs to be a USB, have USB webcam support. So okay. those are the two things that my husband said. He he told me to write this down. He was like, write <laughs> these down because if these if the camera doesn't have these things, it's not going to work. So clean HDMI output or USB webcam support. So the Canons, there's about 20 of them, I think he said, that have the, I think it's the clean HDMI output. However, with the Canon cameras, there is a little bit of trouble in terms of they have their own software that they like to use. And I think it's free. It's still a little bit glitchy because it's in the beta and it doesn't really run well with things like Ecamm. Okay. Um, actually, sorry, it does work well with Ecamm. There's other programs that we were looking at before we realized we could use Ecamm. So it just, it's finicky. So if you have time to potentially troubleshoot something, by all means, you can do that. But um, the Canons are a little bit finicky like that. Um, so we're in the process of looking, we're looking at the Sony A6000, okay. which is a couple of years old now. This one has, it just works apparently with, with all the programs out there. Um, so the programs we were looking at first, at first were uh, OBS, which a lot of streamers use, video game mm -hmm. streamers, and um, Streamlabs, which is kind of a sister company of OBS. But the, this Canon camera does not work with them. Okay. Um, so those are good kind of programs to look at if you have Windows or a non-Mac computer, because Ecamm is Mac only, OBS and Streamlabs works with both. Right. Um, so that's what we were playing around with a little bit, but it kept crashing. It wouldn't recognize the camera. It, it, there was a delay sometimes with the audio and the video. And then we were watching lots of YouTube channels of what different people <laughs> were using to right. upload. And one random person mentioned Ecamm and I was like, I have Ecamm and I bought it years ago when you could Me buy too. it and there's mm -hmm. not a monthly subscription. So I still have it. I actually do my Facebook lives with it because since Facebook did some update where it's like three, two, one, but you don't know if you're live, everyone's video starts off with, am I live? Right. Are we going? Or the beginning gets cut off because they figured they were live and they started right away. And I was like, I went through that way too many times. I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm just going back to using my eCam. So um, some of the awesome things with eCam is in the standard package, you can have different scenes. So I have my disclaimer in there right away as scene one. Then I oh. hit control two and it brings up me with my little logo in the corner. And then I press control three and it's got my contact card at the end. So yeah, there's this awkward moment where I bend down and, and finick with buttons, but I'd rather Stand have it. that than spend an hour and a half editing. And then with Ecamm, you can also color correct. So you can set it all up and depending how your lighting is, you can warm it up, you can cool it down, you can take some of the purple out, some of the green out, you can add some contrast, you can add brightness, like there's all kinds of little picture things you can do with Ecamm. So as it stands right now, I've got my, so I'm using two laptops, one iPhone, because that was the other thing about the uh, camera that I meant to mention earlier is it was destroying the battery in my phones to be oh. running classes that much. I had the battery replaced in my current phone in January, I believe, and it's not good anymore. <laughs> it probably okay. needs another replacement. So just the amount of times that the screen is on and it's just really killing the battery. So I use my old iPhone. So it's an old iPhone 6 Plus. It doesn't even get updates anymore. And I use that to stream through Zoom right now. I okay. hook up the camera to an old laptop I have and that sends it to YouTube as we're teaching. And then I have my newer laptop sitting in front of me where I do a screen share with the computer. I'm pointing back because it's all set up behind me where I screen share my old computer so I can run Ecamm off this computer and I have a split screen with my Zoom class. So I have oh. Ecamm pulled up from that computer and Zoom pulled up where I can see everyone. And I are just have to make wires sure. wires everywhere then? Where are those two computers sitting? Both near you then? Nope, not too close. I mean, um, one is right behind me. So it all runs through uh, internet. So I have, there were a lot of wires in here. We've hid them. 
Um, so right now, the only wires that people see are, and I'm looking at them right now, an extension cord that goes underneath the stool. I can actually show you my little setup. So it goes underneath the stool. There's yeah. a bunch of wires under there. This computer sits on top. I've got the camera set up. I've got an extra little um, clamp that I bought for the phone that sits beside it. And I tried to put the, the lenses as close to each other as possible. And then the camera is hooked up to the computer. I also hooked up that computer to an Ethernet cable. So like oh, yes. the old school plug in, like it's not going through wireless because the quality is better when you do that. Yes. And if you have a newer Mac, because I'm using Mac, it doesn't have an Ethernet cable. So I actually pulled out this little thing I have. Connected yoga teachers, you can't see the thing that Dominique just held up in the video, but what she showed us was a dongle. I know, it's a really funny word. (laughs) I will also link to a dongle in our show notes in case you're wondering, what the heck is that? Another thing Dominique showed us in the video is the microphone setup. And she also told us about her very long Ethernet cable. I think she said it might be 100 feet long. Then we got into this really great discussion that I want you to hear where she talked about the way she cares for her Zoom students. So again, remember, this is when she was teaching hybrid, both in person and online at the very same time, how she cares for her Zoom students so that they don't feel left out. The people on Zoom don't get a cheaper discount because they're on Zoom. Right. I gave bonuses instead. So people in person have the ability to stick around and chat with me after class. It's awkward on Zoom because my microphone's right here. They're listening in on conversations. So I gave them a bonus of 50 minutes, one-to-one sessions. So if they want to give me a call, chat about something that's kind of bothering them in their body, the way students would come to us and talk after class, they can book it. Most people don't use it, but it's there if they want it. And it's good for the whole session. nice. Mm -hmm. What a great idea that is. So then you shut your mic off when you're Mm -hmm. like going around at the end of the class. And yeah, that's That's really important, actually, because someone didn't realize that they were being recorded. Yeah. And sometimes people start talking to each other in Zoom and then somebody else is talking to me here. So I like mute my mic and I talk to the person here while they're having their conversation because, again, my retention rate is super high and they all know each other. So they're just as excited to catch up with each other probably more so than catching up with me. (laughs) I just share my life story on social media. So they know what's going on with me, but they don't know what's going on with each other. So I'm popping in again here, connected yoga teachers, because when I spoke with Dominique live, one of our live viewers, shout out to Jacqueline, shared that this information was so helpful. And Dominique's reply was so good. And I wanted to make sure that you got to hear it. I'm not a tech savvy person at all. So it kind of makes me laugh that I'm here talking about the tech stuff, but I need to be shown how to do things. And I've told my husband, I'm like, no, don't tell me, don't make post-it notes for me. Show me how you do it or talk me through it as I'm doing it. So it sticks. So I'm glad, Jacqueline, that this is helpful for you. And so time saving, it saves so much time. I feel like I have my life back. No kidding. Anything else, Dominique, that you have found to be super helpful in this journey? Like, I think we're our own toughest critics. Like if something doesn't go wrong, we're like, oh my God, this didn't happen. The sound didn't work, the this didn't work. But our clients, our students, they're so forgiving, especially right now. Like if you're going to get into online teaching, now's the time to do it because everyone knows this is new for us. Um, And another side note today, this actually just came up this morning, and I don't know if this really applies, but it was something that was almost refreshing for me to hear as well is a studio in Cambridge, which is not too far from here, just announced that they were closing down. She announced it over uh, Facebook and she had a lot of comments coming in about, oh, what what was this? Why did you make that decision? And then she would get some private messages. Oh, you must've gotten a new job or something. And she's like, no, I just couldn't afford to do it. And we are continuing to try to provide positivity and a space for people to feel good that a lot of times they just don't know that we're struggling. So I wouldn't be afraid to ask people, like, it doesn't have to be monetary. I've recently asked my students, I'm like, if you love the classes here and you see somebody looking for a recommendation on Facebook, please take a moment to, to recommend the studio. Please leave a Google review. Please, like, just word of mouth is still the best advertisement. And it's okay if they know that you're struggling. It's yeah. 
it's okay. Like they're, you know, we're not superheroes. <laughs> like We're all doing our best. Um, but you know, it's embarrassing to say that we're struggling. And then you suddenly hear about a studio. Like I know a few places here, uh, when they announced that they were shutting down their physical locations, my mind was blown because it seemed like everything was going really well and it's okay to be a little bit vulnerable. Um, last week I actually posted a pretty vulnerable post about, uh, the new restrictions that we had here where I took a picture. It's me with my head in my hands. And I was actually crying that morning <laughs> because I cr- I'm not a crying person, but I have cried so much. Every time something new comes up, I'm just a mess. And it's not because I'm scared of what will happen because at this point I know that I will make it work, but yes. it's the learning. It's the learning that feels like, oh my gosh, there's something else I have to figure out now. There's something else. Um, so taking your time, even if the only thing you do differently today is maybe change the angle of your camera so it people can see you better because that was a big p- thing people were worried about here. I have a lot of uh, older students as clientele, um, older than me. I'm uh, somewhere in my 30s. <laughs> something. Um, but I have a lot of women who are 50, 60 years old taking classes and their big concern was A, the technology and B, if they're going to be able to see me or hear me. So even just maybe taking that one step of just changing the angle of your camera, we don't need to see your floor. We need to see maybe a couple of inches in front of your mat, but we don't need to see the giant floor and taking time to really position your camera so they can see you. And then yeah. taking it one step at a time, one step at a time, because it is very overwhelming to do yeah. all the things at once. This is so good. Like, I love how you said you just started. You you listened to Amanda and I to say, don't, don't go out and buy anything. Just use whatever you have. Um, Phoebe is saying crying is powerful yoga. I agree. <laughs> like, I feel like if... if if our feelings are valid at any point about being yoga teachers who have a reason to cry, this year is one of those for sure. Mm-hmm. Also, one of my key takeaways that you were saying was um, moving that camera into the centers so that those people on Zoom really feel like they're part of things. I think that's fantastic to look at how we can still feel together as a group. I think your offering of like, I'll do this one-on-one session with you if you're my virtual student is amazing you said that your husband built your platform so you don't you don't use something like a course platform he mm-hmm. put that all together yeah and if I could figure out how to share my screen I could actually show what it looks like well I'll show our people what the website looks like because your website looks fantastic Connected Yoga Teachers, I am going to link to Dominique's website in the show notes. Thank you. I'll pass that um, along to him. He'll give himself a good old pat on the back for that one. Can you see it there? Yes, you can see it there. It looks amazing. Like I love how, and if people weren't listening at, at the very beginning, then Dominique specializes in helping people with their pelvic floor and their core. I love it that you can see it right away. And this is nice, like the private sessions, book now, small group. Oh, this looks so good. I'm really excited about this. So I hope our connected yoga teachers check it out and register for a class. Dominique also shared how she eased her students into Zoom once she learned it. And I think there are so many great takeaways here if you're new to this or if you have students who are new to Zoom. I knew nothing about Zoom except as a participant before and set up um, like a meet and greet on Zoom so they could play around with it. They could figure out and see it's actually not that scary because especially with some of our, I think it's better now because so many people have had to rely on things like Zoom right? that it's not so anxious anymore to just get on there. But at the beginning, a lot of these people had never even heard of Zoom. And they were really anxious about the technology part. And some of them did ask if they could defer to another session. And I gladly let them. But I created a couple of opportunities where I was like, I'm going to be on Zoom from this time to this time. Here's the link. If you want to hop in, say hi, play around with it, let me talk you through it. Then uh, just click this link and it'll take you right there. That's so nice. That's, Mm -hmm. That's a great idea to get our students because there probably are some students that even still, you know, held off thinking, oh, we'll be a few weeks of this. Like I remember thinking, you know, a couple months of this. <laughs> Here we are rolling around at <laughs> the yeah. end of the year. 
So as I said a while ago, Connected Yoga teachers, when Dominique and I talked, her students had the choice to be there in her studio in person or online. And I wondered what were most of them choosing? And here's what she said. I'd say about 75% of my students are still using Zoom, even though we've been allowed to be open since, like I said, it was either end of July or beginning of August. And, but there was about 25% of them that did it for a while and they were like, I just, it's not for me. And I get it because I'm not, personally, I'm not a huge fan of taking classes online. If I want to go to a class, I would like to go be there because there's two, I have four children at home. Right. Between the ages of two and 14. Um, And we have like, we don't have a huge house. There's nowhere for me to go. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Where I'm not going to hear the pitter patter of feet or mommy, mommy, because they know I'm home. Um, but to be able to provide that service, I'm really happy to do, but some people just are not into online. Thank you for walking us through this today. This has been so helpful and I encourage our connected yoga teachers to sign up for a class with you for sure online. Like I said, connected yoga teachers, Dominique just keeps adding one more thing. So what is she working on now? in terms of adding one more thing to this tech to make things a little bit easier, have a listen. So the thing we're working on right now, I want to mention, and we had to get Ecamm Pro to do this, is actually sending the video to YouTube and Zoom at the same time. That's amazing. StreamYard that I'm using right now pushes to YouTube and our Facebook at the same time. So I feel like that could be a possibility for teachers if they had a private Facebook group for their students and yeah. then wanted to also put it on to YouTube. I love that you shared so much detail with us today. Thank you so much, Dominique. Yeah. And um, if people want to learn more about you, they can go to bodymindfitness.ca. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thank Thanks you. so much for having me. It was a blast. And if anybody has any extra questions that they need more clarity on, please let me know. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Well, Connected Yoga Teachers, I would love to hear what your thoughts are on today's episode. Thank you again, Dominique. This was so much information. I feel like my key takeaway in all of this is seeing how you were just like, okay, let's do this. I'm not even sure how to use Zoom. I'll help my students. We won't even make it about yoga, just a quick visit and play around with Zoom. I love that. I think that That's a great way to also build community. I heard about a yoga teacher this week who's doing tea time with her students. There's no yoga involved. They're just gathering for tea time together. And if you are listening to this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't think I'm at the point where I can stream to YouTube and have all of these things. I don't think that's the point of today's episode, although it's here for you if you are at that place in your online yoga business. I think the biggest thing is what's one small thing that you can add on. And if you are feeling stuck, there are over 10,000 yoga teachers in our Connected Yoga Teacher Facebook group who are figuring this out together. Honestly, you can post a really random question about technology and there will be a pile of yoga teachers that help you out in there. It's a pretty amazing place for support and help. And the only rule in there is that you post supportive and helpful comments. And I mean, there are some other rules. (laughs) They're in the group rules, but basically post supportive and helpful things and keep your self-promotion to the share threads. And that way it just makes it a really great group to hang out in. One thing I want to tell you about Connected Yoga Teachers before I close today's episode is that Many of you might have heard me talking about the 20-hour yoga for pelvic health training in the past. And normally, I always do this training in person in Meaford, Ontario. And this year, obviously, those plans got changed due to COVID. And so then the training was planned for September and we were going to do it online. Those plans got changed because of my herniated disc and the recovery and my healing and just feeling like I can't sit for that long and share this information in the way that I want to. Well, I'm really happy to report that we're two weeks in to the live online training and 
There are some things that I really miss from being in person for this training, but there are also a lot of bonuses that I didn't know would even exist doing this training online. And one of those is that four people reached out to me the weekend that it began and said either like I'm across the world and these time zones don't work for me or I work on those weekends And they all were asking, please, can we have the replay and go through the training? And that was never an option before, and it is now. So I have really exciting news that you can join that training if you're wanting to teach yoga for pelvic health to groups, to individuals. We go through each and every pelvic health topic that is like the most common that you would see show up in a yoga class. We teach you flows poses, breath practices, but most of all, we really focus in on the why we're teaching this so that you can take your style of yoga, your poses, your flows, and create them in a way that really supports and enhances someone's pelvic health. And if you're wondering who on this planet needs, you know, yoga for pelvic health, my thought is, every single person that has a pelvis. I'm a little bit biased though. I really love pelvic health. I love how all of the information can really empower our students to understand how their body works on a whole new level. Also, if you have questions about the training, reach out to me. I love to answer questions. Before I sign off, I want to say a huge thank you to our team, Suzanne Crunch, Nick, and Sinead for making today's episode possible and also for keeping our community, our Facebook community, in a happy and organized state. And do you know the question that I'm going to ask now? I want to know, what will you be doing this week to stay connected to yourself, your yoga practice, and to your community so that you can share the yoga that lights you up? <laughs>